And what this comes down to really is their knowledge. So yes. for a foreign substance, mm -hmm. what you were kind of getting at there is the timeline kind of establishes, did they know or should they have known with reasonable inspection that right. this thing existed on the floor? Right. So like we said, a classic banana of a banana peel, example of a banana peel falling from a produce stand mm -hmm. in the produce aisle. Um, if that area is normally, you know, yeah people, associates, personnel, right. whatever, around that area for a significant period of time that they should have seen it, right. then that would establish that they had knowledge it was there. Right. Um, and then, obviously, when you're talking about a dangerous condition that was created by the property owner, we have to have kind of a reasonableness standard of, mm -hmm. to, was it is it reasonable to believe that what they did would cause someone to be injured? Right. So, you know, you said the example of someone waxing floors or mopping floors. Mm -hmm. Well, it's pretty reasonable to understand that someone could easily fall. That's why most right. of the time when we see someone mopping up a, you know, clean up on aisle three, there's a wet floor sign. Right. So they're taking that step to warn people about the fact that we're creating this dangerous condition. Right. We know it's dangerous. We're warning you. Right. Um, and then, you know, so it really just comes down to proving that knowledge. Right. And there's a big key thing of reasonableness and knowledge. Mm -hmm. And so we have to be able to prove that what a reasonable person working there should have seen it or would it be reasonable to know that that business knows right. that what they just did created a dangerous condition. Right. And, and you know, an adequate warning is almost a complete defense. Mm -hmm. You know, cones, when, when, it, it, when it's clear even to a customer, you know, who there's no reason to expect there's any dangers that would happen while they're just going shopping uh, for dinner for the night or, or what have you. Um, if, if, a lot of it does come down to warning. Even with an invitee, if there's something dangerous um, and there's a fair warning, that that's a complete defense. Now, um, with dangerous conditions, you know, you can't just – let me put it this way. Here, here, I mean, here's, the, and I guess, an exception to that. If you, if you use tiles that are terrible to save money, and it's pretty reasonable to think that they'll, they'll cause people to, to, to wipe out, you can't just – put a little sticker on the front of the store, like, Hey guys, just make sure you're careful when you're walking. So, so it has to be an adequate warning and it can't be a warning to just completely get them off the hook um, for any responsibility to, you know, exercise re reasonable care. So, so like you, like we've been talking about, it really just comes down to ordinary care. The, the, yeah. du the duty of care is to exercise reasonable care. But we do see, you know, I, I see it anyway. We do see responsible business owners who say if it's raining, just right out of the gate before anything ever happens, there's a wet floor sign when you walk in. Oh, yeah. Because they know people are walking in with wet feet. There's probably going to be water here. Right. It's going to create that dangerous situation. So they kind of are very proactive. Right. And they're doing what they should do. Yeah. Warn everyone to say, hey, you may not have realized when you just walked out of the rain, mm -hmm. but the water, you know, could be on the floor. Exactly. And just be careful. Exactly. Um, but on the other hand, on the other end of the spectrum, we see way too many times business owners or business managers, at least, mm -hmm. you know, who do not take that step. Right. Um, and they just kind of leave things out there. Yeah. Um, 